Thank you, Chris. Um, and thanks, everyone, for coming out today. Uh, this is my first time lecturing a group of college kids and not getting graded on it, so this is kind of exciting. Um, so as Chris mentioned, uh, I am a business intelligence analyst. Um, I currently am working at the National Council of Architectural Registration Boards, which is a regulatory body. So if you want to be an architect, you have to go through us. Um, and I've been there about five weeks at this point, so it's still very new and exciting. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about today is kind of um, where I come from. So I, I put this down as story time because it's a Friday at 2 o'clock for the weekend. Um, I figured everyone could use a break from like crushing giant intellectual problems and just hear what it's like out in the real world. Um, so. I, I got started uh, in data, if you will, um, when I was working at the Book Center at the University of Maryland. Um, one of the program areas that I was responsible for uh, was the magazine department, which was endlessly fascinating despite being a dying uh, breed of publication. Uh, and so I, I wanted to catalog all of the publications that we had, and I wanted to figure out how they were performing and then decide which magazines we should actually be stocking. I felt like I was coming up with the newest and greatest idea. But I didn't have a computer. I had graph paper. So I drew out a little table, and I manually, uh, with pencil and paper, listed out all of the titles that we had for sale. And then I tracked their sales over a little bit of time. Um, so I felt, I felt very cool about that one. Uh, my next job uh, was working at a hotel where I had Excel, which was thrilling. It was a computer program that could do all of this cool stuff that I'd never even thought of before. Um, and uh, I worked in revenue management, so I was working on tracking historical sales data and then forecasting um, where we should be selling in the market. Um, and then from there, I went to the Entomological Society of America, um, which if anybody knows what an entomologist is, you get extra credit. Yeah, bugs, insect scientists. Um, entomological, yeah, yeah. Um, bugs. Um, so I'm actually deathly afraid of bugs. <laughs> um, I have a picture of me freaking out holding a giant spider, which is not an insect, but close enough uh, if anyone would like to see it afterwards. Um, so, uh, so I was there, and I was their database manager, and I was all things analytics um, to everyone in the organization, serving several different departments. Um, and uh, providing support for anything, any type of request that was coming into the organization. Um, and so that was really sort of where I started to hit my stride. Um, but the funny thing is, I got all this way uh, with a French major. I studied at the University of Maryland French. I thought for sure I'd get a job at like Netflix translating subtitles or in Nice uh, teaching uh, small children English or something like that. Um, but I graduated in 2010 and the reality of the matter was I needed a job. I needed something. And so I didn't know it at the time. I didn't think I liked data. I probably didn't even really understand what data was. Um, but what I did have was a keen ability to communicate in English as well as French. Um, and so that's how I ended up getting the job at the hotel. And that's how I ended up getting the job at the Entomological Society of America. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today, is about the importance of being able to communicate uh, what you're doing with, whether it's data, statistics, analytics, whatever you're working on. If you can't talk to your audience, you're not going to be able to get very far with what you're working on. And so at the Entomological Society of America, a lot of my focus was on taking in requests, which involves a lot of back and forth. Um, you need to be able to have a conversation with the person about what their business need is, about what they're actually trying to do with the information, about where they're really going. You know, sometimes you get a request that's sort of um, half there. It's not the whole process. It's just part of the piece, part of the puzzle. Um, and so you have to kind of work, be able to work with people, have conversations, flesh that out. Um, and then from there, you need to be able to actually solve the problem, which, again, French major, no programming skills, none whatsoever. I thought Excel was cool. I really did. Um, and so uh, that's where the self-service piece comes in. Tools like, as Chris mentioned, Alteryx. Um, I also used Tableau a lot. 
all of these self-service products that enabled me to use my communication skills to take a data problem and actually solve it for my audience. To be able to um, ingest a question, go to the data and figure out what the answer was without actually knowing anything uh, very sophisticated um, at the end of the day. Um, so, as part of this process, um, the communication to figure out the initial business need, the actual, the hard part, doing it, figuring out what that answer is, what that um, data set looks like, um, and then being able to go back to the person and communicate what you found, why you found it, what they can do with it. And from there, it becomes sort of an iterative process. Um, so you're not, in most cases, going to receive a request, process it, put something back out and say, ta-da, I did it. Um, in most cases, there's going to be a lot of back and forth. Someone's going to realize they didn't ask the right question the first time, or they're going to realize now that you've provided this data, they actually have a lot more questions. Um, but it's going to be continued back and forth. And so those communication skills, again, are coming to play. Um, so uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little bit of an oddball in the data community, um, both because I have a French major and because I work in the association space. So a little bit about associations. Uh, they are nonprofit organizations. Um, they can be a couple different flavors thereof. Um, but basically, they're organizations that serve a mission primarily. Um, and they come in all stripes in terms of revenue. I happen to work for a very small one. Um, and. Uh, where I sort of found this niche was in being able to provide an analytical capacity to an organization that otherwise isn't necessarily going to have one, um, but also providing a voice to their data. So not just being able to take their data and do something with it, but to be able to talk about it both to the internal customers, to the external stakeholders, to the membership at large. Um, and so that's sort of where I really sharpened that craft. Um, some of my biggest moments were presenting data to the board. Uh, so, you know, taking something that started off with one simple question and following it through that process all the way to presenting it to the board and saying, you know, here's the state of X for your organization and being able to have that conversation with them, to take questions, to be able to um, share the story with them. Uh, so, after about four and a half years at the Entomological Society of America, um, I was not interested in making a move, um, but people had heard tell of my uh, great and magical powers, I guess. <laughs> um, and so uh, several job offers came to me, and I ultimately ended up at the National Council of Architectural Registration Boards. But this time, instead of sort of hodgepodging together my role and just kind of figuring out what I'm doing as I'm going, um, I have an actual uh, sort of uh, thesis around my work and, and basically I'm saying, you know, I am going to come into this organization um, and they have some self-service analytics, they have some people with access to data, they have a lot of what you'll find exists out there, shadow databases where, you know, so-and-so in this department has their own thing that they keep in an Excel sheet that they don't let anybody else see but they make very important business decisions off of. Um, those are not your friends. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so my mission there is really to bring analytics to the people. And so uh, it's not necessarily my job to build up this huge competency uh, to then wall off the analytics and say, if you want them, you come through me. Ask me a question and I will answer it. Rather, it's my job to support people in their sort of personal data discovery so that they can come in talk to me, build a relationship with me and with the data, and then go out from there and explore it on their own, and then come back to me as a resource for questions. Um, and I think that's a lot of what you're going to find out there, especially in my space, in the smaller business space, um, is that there's this huge proliferation of tools where people can actually get out their own stuff. Almost everything comes with an analytics component at this point, you know, whether it's an app you've downloaded on your phone to an email marketing client that you're using organization-wide, it's going to have some sort of baked-in analytical competency. So if you want to really build out yourself as a resource to people, it's not going to be about providing the data or providing the chart or providing a, something that loads up when you view it that looks really snazzy. 
it's going to be about having those conversations. Um, it's going to be about helping them through the analytical process uh, and sort of being that sort of shepherd <laughs> role uh, through the process. Um, it's about having these conversations and building relationships and supporting people as they take advantage of all that's out there.